Welcome to the show from the soapbox to the stage. I'm your host, Bill Corbin. If you've ever dreamed of standing on a stage to inspire, educate, or motivate an audience, then you've tuned into the right show. Now, speaker training is certainly important, but acquiring effective feedback to measure our progress against our goals is even more critical as a speaker. I asked my guests for some tips on getting the best feedback when speaking on the stage. With me on the show today is Pete Winarski, professional speaker, transformational leader, business consultant, and results coach. He's the author of the number one international bestseller, Act Now, a daily action log for achieving your goals in 90 days. Mr. Winarski is also the innovator behind the Win Holistic Transformation Model, a system of innovative and actionable strategies to help individuals, business leaders, and businesses themselves achieve their full potential. Thanks for staying on for the show, Pete. All right, thank you. So you're number one. When I asked you about tips to offer people who are considering going into speaking, uh, one of the tips that you offered, um, I, I really like because it was all about, it's all about feedback. And, and, and how I connected feedback is because you said record everything you do on audio and video. Right. And that provides, and you said two things, it provides great feedback and also cr creates products for you somewhere down the line, right? It does, and, and I, I'm a feedback junkie. And uh, you know, from the beginning when I was awful, I was recording myself, and I didn't want anyone to see it afterwards <laughs> because of how bad I thought it was. Of course, who's the strongest and worst critic, yeah. it's always yourself. And other people would say, wow, that was great. And I'm like, really, it was? And then I'd, I'd listen to that audit, you know, in-person audible feedback. But watching yourself and, and seeing how did you respond gives you a chance to, to try something new. Did you move around a lot? What were you doing with your hands? Um, were you animated? Were you stiff? Were you leaning? You know, all these things. You can see it with your own eyes. I mean, it goes right back to, I remember, you know, being a senior in college going through interview training <laughs> for you know, uh, job interviewing, and it was videotaped. And what an awful experience to see yourself on videotape for the first time. Well, now it's just naturally uh, part, of, part of what I do. And I'll, I'll look at something that I have, have filmed, and of course I am still my strongest critic, but I'll, I'll, I'll pick up on things that, hmm, I tried that, I'm not sure that worked very well. Or when that person asked a question and I handled it this way, boo, I wish I had said this instead. You know, those types of things. It's the finer details now. It's not the grand big things that are, are wrong anymore, if you will. It's the details. Yeah, we fine tune, but you're so right. We're, we're our worst critics. And I know a lot of people who, who uh, say, no, 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 don't videotape me. It's, it's easier not to see it than it is to see it. But you're right, I, I watch clips of myself because uh, I contribute to national television. Mm -hmm. First thing I do is I watch the clip and f figure out whether I can use it in my marketing plan or not. And then I'll look at some and go, oh, no, no. Yeah. You know, the, the reason <laughs> it, it, the lighting wasn't right, or I didn't say the right things, or I, I stumbled on something, because we're all human, we make mistakes. The, the human yeah. brain doesn't always work well with the mouth, right? Right, and, and you're so right about lighting. Oh my goodness, you could do everything absolutely perfect, and the lighting was a mess, and it's like, oh, this isn't usable. So, so feedback is one uh, important thing to uh, use video or audio recordings from. In my book, um, I wrote in the, from the soapbox to the stage, one of the things I did was I offered a couple of different options because there's more things than people realize that you can do and it all starts with just recording. In fact, I have to tell you, I, one of my chapters in my book is how to write a book without typing a word and, and all because of technology. We can mm -hmm. use uh, recorders and then have it transcribed and, and get an editor to fix it. You don't even have to type one word. Right. Um, but there's all kinds of other products that we can use, whether it's CDs or digital downloads. And now, uh, uh, I think really uh, business savvy speakers have got it figured out. When you build your website, you want to be able to provide products to reward people for joining your newsletter mail list right. or for joining your site, right? Yes, it's, it's the product funnel. And it could be the free thing at first or the, the relatively inexpensive, you know, less than $10 item that always adds tremendous value beyond what someone pays for. And then you can record your teleseminars, you can videotape your, your keynotes. Um, you know, one of the products I have is a videotaped keynote and it works extremely well. Um, and then you could build on that and, and go into more depth and have, you know, you know the largest course I have is 14 videos, me direct to camera with um, the, the workbooks and, uh, you know, the transcripts and all kinds of things to go behind that 14 
uh, video curriculum. But you can't get there until you start at the beginning and some of what you create is you getting the two for one because you're already speaking. You, know, you can have the recorder tucked away in your, in your pocket without anyone knowing it's there unless you can get it through the soundboard, which is often even better. And then the video, if you are that advanced, and ta-da, you've got some, some product. And for 40, 50 bucks, the recorders today, oh my gosh, They're the wonderful. technology is awesome. I mean, I have one that I fit right in my pocket. In fact, I have an inner pocket set up so that it keeps the head of the, the uh, microphone right above the nice. level of my uh, pocket. And the, the quality is amazing. And I use that either to listen to, to find out how well I did. You can easily edit it now with, with a software right. off the, like Audacity and yes. different packages. Edit it down to either demos or mm -hmm. you can cut CDs if you want to and sell right. them right off of Amazon. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Um, another tip you have for people is you say, uh, build a team of people to manage the logistics. Oh my goodness, yes. Tell us about that. Well. First of all, the, the person to all of the back and forth on the phone, on the front end, is it's an awful lot of work. If anyone has ever been in a sales role and they've had to place the call and then follow up and then eventually get to the point where they're closing the deal, it's an awful lot of work. So I actually have someone on the team who's doing a lot of the groundwork. You know, eventually I get involved, eventually I'll be on the phone, someone wants to meet me, and I'm happy to do that. But the logistical details, that's not my strength. My strength is standing up and connecting with the audience, connecting with people, getting a message out that there's, is going to help them along, share some of the things that I've learned so that they can uh, build on whatever their goals are in their lives. So the details, I'd rather have someone else take care of that. And it works out very, very well. The day of the event, um, you know, if we have a table for back of the room sales or even just you know, sign up on our info list, um, to have someone there managing some of that is, is just tremendous as opposed to trying to do it all yourself. This way I can walk in, I trust that the team has the details figured out, I shake the right hands with the people who are responsible for getting me there and have some good conversation and then there's the audience. And it's, it's, it's me and them and we're connecting, we're having a great time and then when it's over, someone else is helping to clean up. And the best part of having that crew is at the conclusion, oftentimes your participants want to connect more. They either have questions or they want to say how wonderful your presentation was and how it touched their lives, but they want to touch you, they want to talk to you. And uh, it's great to have somebody else doing the sales table because usually after the presentation, that's when they run to the table yes. and that's when they buy your books and they want you to sign it. So good presenters are ready to sign books and talk to their audience, That's right. not have to do the transactions. So it's important to have that crew you're talking about in the shadows before it's set up, making mm -hmm. all the arrangements, even travel arrangements. And then it's even great if you have to do a lot of the technical setup, have a crew come in and do the technical setup for you so you don't have to be crawling around under uh, uh, curtains and hooking up wires. Right. And then at the conclusion, when it's uh, your chance to really uh, reach out and, and be with your audience. That's right. And at the same time, I've been on an assisting team helping someone else crawling around connecting wires. So I, it, it is kind of important to appreciate what has to happen. You know, to put on a show like this, you have to know what the details are, but let someone else take care of them. Now, one of your other tips, we, we've got uh, just uh, another two minutes. Um, it, it's more about connecting with the audience than it is about having your speech polished. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, you, you think about what am I going to say next? And if my brain is stuck on that, and I'm trying to remember exactly what the PowerPoint said or exactly what I had written out, you're gonna lose folks. You want to be into their hearts and minds and help them through whatever their issues are. And if the body language that they're giving to you is that they're not on, on top of what you're saying, time to take a pause. Forget about what your PowerPoint's all about and, and stick with them. Because connecting with them is, if you can, touch their hearts, touch their minds, touch their soul in a way that they will remember how you made them feel in the event, they will walk away and remember you. They may or may not remember anything exactly what you said, but they'll get the essence of what you said. And that is more powerful than the quote. Well, uh, th these are a lot of great tips. I think a lot of people will find these uh, really helpful. But I want to thank you for taking the time to come out and uh, join me thank on you. the show and share this with, with my viewers. So good luck to you. Thank you very uh, much. I hope your book continues to sell well. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
On today's show, we met Pete Winarski, a professional speaker, transformational leader, and business consultant. His primary tip for us was record everything you do on audio and video and use it to get your own powerful feedback and to create products. Now, because we can be our own worst critics, using it as feedback moves us to improve our skills far greater than any other form of feedback available. I hope you'll join me for future episodes of this show as I set out to tap into the knowledge of professional speakers who are willing to share their secrets for success on the stage. It takes a lot of courage to get up in front of others and speak. It takes even more courage to do it as part of your business or marketing plan. And when you do, it will set you apart from your competition and get you noticed by your prospects and customers. So make the choice to be different from the rest. As Dale Carnegie once said, make the most of today, get interested in something, shake yourself awake, and let the winds of enthusiasm sweep through you with gusto. I'm Bill Corbett. I'll see you the next time on From the Soapbox to the Stage.